एंड एज वी नो के एवरी मंडेज एंड फ्राइडेज हमारे साथ टैली सोल्यूशन से टैली कम्प्लाइंस मेस्त्रो होते हैं आज हमारे साथ है सी ए मनीष अरोरा उनके बारे में बताने से पहले आपको बताना चाहेंगे कि टैक्स और कम्प्लायंस जब भी हम बात करते हैं स्पेशली फॉर स्मॉल बिजनेस इट्स अ वेरी पेनफुल एक्सपीरियंस नाउ वन पर्सन हु कैन टेल अस मोर अबाउट इट इज सी ए मनीष अरोरा बिकॉज ही इज एक्चुअली गोइंग थ्रू अ वेरी पेनफुल एक्सपीरियंस राइट नाउ एंड वी वुड अप्रीशिएट कि इसके वजह से भी आप आए स्टूडियो में सो आपके कमिटमेंट की दाद देनी पड़ेगी थैंक यू वेरी मच इवन दो हर्टिंग योर लेग यू स्टिल मेड इट टू आर स्टूडियो सो बिग थैंक यू फॉर दैट Thank you so much. It's <laughs> a uh, to be here. So Manish Arora ke bare mein batate hain aapko. So now he's a chartered accountant with over 12 uh, years of post qualification experience in direct and indirect taxation, especially transfer pricing and international taxation with a rich pre qualification experience in tax and audit and he also holds a diploma in international taxation and transfer pricing issued by Institute of Chartered Accountants by India. Now he's here to talk about BEPS pillar to implication on the UAE corporate tax. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So, BEPS pillar to implications. सबसे पहले तो हम जानेंगे कि BEPS होता क्या है. Well, that that's good. I think we should have the clear background. So, before coming to BEPS, I'll mention about an association we have globally, mm -hmm. which is the OECD, okay. Organization of uh, Organization of Economic and Cooperation Development. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's a corporation where I have multiple countries as a member. Mm -hmm. So what they do apart from tax, multiple other initiatives they take. Okay. So one of them is the tax. Okay. So what they realized, just to keep it in a simple terms, mm -hmm. they felt that the big companies groups mm -hmm. are not paying the tax fairly. Acha. Mm. Yeah. So what they are doing, they are shifting their uh, profits mm -hmm. to a countries where they paying low or nil taxes. Okay. Mm. So overall, what they analyzed as per their data, uh -huh. that they are losing globally. Around two hundred billion dollar annually, okay, mm. as part of tax revenue. Okay, so they termed it is BEPS, which is BEPS, base erosion and profit shifting practices. Acha, okay. जो normally MNCs बड़े companies कर रहे थे. I won't say कर रहे थे, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to keep a check. कोशिश कर रहे थे. कोई कोशिश. Or this is something I would say that okay, they felt that it is being done. Mm. I won't say that. Oh, they only felt we have only also precedents in the past in the uh, other countries mm. where it was. Proved that yeah, few companies are involved. Okay. So that's what they that's where this, they decide this is the area hmm. they have to looked into. Okay. So yeah. they came up with this BEPS action plans. Right. Right. How many countries are part of this, and is UAE a part of this as well? So presently there are thirty eight countries which mm. are part of this organization. Mm -hmm. UAE is not part of the member. Okay. So it's majorly the developed countries, I would say, uh, they are part of this organizations. Mm -hmm. So, but when they initiated this. Beps program. Mm -hmm. What they said, we have to have an inclusive approach. Okay. Mm. We'll include so many countries. I okay. mean, all the countries, including non-OECD countries. Mm -hmm. That is where the uh, many other countries signed. So I would say presently it's 135 plus countries who have signed this initiative. That's okay. We will also cooperate, bringing up the regulations mm. to ensure that okay there is no such harmful practices. So yes, right. for the Beps uh, program, B, uh, UAE is a member. So this program is only for. corporate tax or is it for any other purposes as it's well it's primarily for corporate tax mainly for and that. what are the benefits of being a part of this program see it's just to uh, ensure that okay you are in a jurisdiction which does not promote a harmful tax practices mm. okay. right and and you are not even letting other the companies uh, those companies who want to do such uh, harmful practices right so to ensure it very tax transparent environment and a compliant environment right. globally because now when we talk about multinational enterprises right. the business or the footprint is not restricted to one country hmm. it's across Global. globe yeah. so uh, one country if taking some initiative it will not serve the purpose hmm. right. that is where every country most of the countries i would say because it's 135 not full globe have joined hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that okay let's work because they all realize that this is a problem which they cannot avoid should not avoid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's how they joined our hands and now working on this initiatives now who right. bodies this uh, beps i mean who who monitors all of them so it's oecd which i mentioned that's okay. that's the organization right and what are the requirements to be a member or to join beps so uh, to join beps it's a uh, pretty stringent if i talk about being a member which is mm. the 38 countries okay. it's a bit stringent process just couple of year back last year i would say last country which was added which was costa rica mm. uh, it's a very stringent process but to be a member of this beps it's just In initiation i would say from the country okay. that i also want to contribute i also want to uh, join hands mm. so that that i would say is 
easy but uh, being a member it's tough mm. as far as the requirements are concerned so what they did in 2015 mm-hmm. they list down certain action items okay. so there were number of 15 action items were there okay. that okay what all uh, things we should do whether it's transfer pricing cbcr prevention of treaty abuse all those things they came up right that okay they have to implement countries have to implement and you'll be happy and surprised to know that when recently ua have launched the corporate tax hmm. many of such provisions are already included in the corporate tax Achha, law mm. so all this transfer pricing uh, t- uh, 3 tier documentation mm. are actually coming from the recommendation which beps had made in past okay right so we're talking about beps pillar 2 Yes. What is pillar two, and and what was pillar one? Firstly, do we need to understand pillar one to get to pillar two? <laughs> no, no, that, that's that's really good uh, question you ask. Uh, when we talk about number two, always question comes: where is number <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, actually, what happened uh, after this action items? They came up in 2016, which I mentioned was the inclusive framework, which mm. every country joined. Mm-hmm. Now in 2020, to simplify, they said. Okay, let me bring these two pillars: mm-hmm. pillar one, pillar two. Mm-hmm. Today we'll focus on pillar two. I'll I'll, I'll explain that. Okay. Pillar one is primarily on the allocating profits. Okay. Which is bit complicated, and and it will come in near future. I would mm-hmm. say or or medium future, mm-hmm. medium future, because uh, it the countries or even OECD is still working on that. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas for pillar two, what they said, again. the intention is to simplify the things that uh, issue was that countries are parking their profits in a low tax right. or a no tax jurisdiction right. so they said every country has to have minimum 15% hmm. effective tax rate okay so then that l- leaves very less leeway to any organization to play with the numbers in different countries right hmm. so minimum 15% minimum 15% hmm. so because there are many countries who already have a tax rate of 20 or 20 plus Correct. so of course they'll not ask them to reduce it reduce so it. Th- they'll say that okay you have to have a minimum tax rate of 15 effective tax rate of 15% that is what In simple terms, is pillar two. Hmm. Right. Of course, there's a calculation behind it. But where does this it. number fifteen percent come from? वही calculation उन्होंने बताया अभी. Beps का. Yeah. So Beps they came minimum up minimum fifteen percent. Minimum fifteen percent. So that's they some. They, average. I mean, see, average tax if we see globally, most of the major companies pay around twenty percent or twenty to twenty five percent, right? Hmm. So that's where of course they cannot impose that. Okay, you have to pay very high taxes. Hmm. So that's where they came up with numbers. Okay, they say fifteen percent is the minimum tax hmm. which you have to pay. But also now nine percent UAE में है. Will this have an impact worldwide as well? Or businesses will find कि यार ये तो बहुत अच्छा lucrative चीज़ है. We will get to know about that. अगर आपके पास सवाल है तो you can always give, send us a WhatsApp zero five eight six eight six one zero zero three. Talk one hundred point three. Manish ji, when we were in a break, we were speaking about a small business relief, and that's I think one of the new. Uh, Norm that is just you know out and people are talking about it. Could you shed some light on the subject? Yes, Miral. I think it's a very very welcome move. It 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 came just few days back, last week only. Uh, but but UAE government announced that okay, all the small businesses which have a turnover of less than three million mm-hmm. AD that will be subject to zero okay. percent. So in nutshell, they'll not have to pay tax. uh that's a very very welcome move as you always say come to the way mm-hmm. <laughs> habibi so uh, b- business for businesses as well the same is applicable not only the tourism mm-hmm. so all the new startups all the small s- sector businesses they will be getting benefited so they didn't want to burden them mm-hmm. uh, the government didn't want to burden them so they explained it and just to share that uh, we already have a kind of a msme which is micro small and medium scale enterprise uh, classification right So if you go there, that's where they have mentioned that okay, micro level covers those businesses which have less than three million of turnover. Revenue. So they targeted that that okay, since they are you are anyways classified under micro, correct. Will will give you the benefit. Right. So you'll not have to pay taxes. So startups के लिए तो anyways it's a good news hmm. because पहले साल दो साल तो but how how much do you expect कि कितने साल रह सकता है ये so relief? presently they have said it will be valid uh, for all the financial years closing on or before thirty first December twenty twenty six 
so effectively you can say maybe three years benefit you'll be getting. Okay. Mm. Uh, is so we don't know how whether it'll be extended or not. But mm. as of now, it's a three years. But still, it's a welcome move. Uh, something is always better than nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. And इसपे हम detailed discussion करने वाले हैं अगले Monday को कि small business relief पे बहुत ही detail में आपको बताएंगे. This is also brought to you by Tally Solutions. Absolutely. And we are talking about BEPS and Pillar Two, and now you know, I mean, just move back to the subject. Yeah. What about MNCs? What which MNCs are covered? in under this law so what uh, this uh, threshold which has been defined by the beps is saying that okay 750 million euro that's the threshold wow mm-hmm. which is mentioned that okay if you are a group which has a consolidated revenue of 750 million euro and above mm-hmm. you are covered under these actions mm-hmm. or i would say specifically pillar 2 which is the current topic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you'll be subject to a minimum tax rate effective tax rate of 15% okay 15 परसेंट का ये जो मिनिमम है ये वर्ल्ड वाइड है नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन विच आई आज बिफोर गोइंग टू ब्रेक तो इससे कोई इम्पैक्ट होगा वर्ल्ड वाइड इन टर्म्स ऑफ की नो बिजनेस विल ट्राई टू कम यर यू ई में so i <laughs> i know where from your comings because right now tax rate is 9% in uae hmm. whereas globally we are talking about 15% right. as i mentioned before uae has already joined hands okay right so sooner or later uae will also implement this effective tax rate of 15% shabash pucha kyun maine ye because this was a question i'm sure many, many companies would have been having that now where to go right so that answer will not that question will not have any answer that we have to go right. because every country sooner or later will bring this mm. action at uh, i would say rule which will have a minimum tax rate of 15% correct mm. so they have to pay either right. in this country or the other country correct right yeah. so as a layman is there anything that we need to read in between the lines to understand the laws better or are we faltering any at any point which you've noticed and we haven't they see it's it's not that you have missed something i think as i mentioned it's simply uh, the minimum tax rate of 15 just to put it without getting in too much into technicalities mm. but what has happened that we are talking about different countries mm. so mm. a country like uae where the entity is there and then the parent company which is in the other country okay so both have to ensure the implementation okay presently since uae has not implemented they will continue charging 9% only okay mm. hey right. so but at the same time suppose the parent company headquartered company in whichever country country it is if mm-hmm. suppose they have implemented it mm. so guess what it's going to happen so in that case the parent company will be supposed to pay this tax of differential 15 to 9 Achha. in their country shabash oh. so for example so, google ka office hai america mein yes and then they are paying let's say 15% wahan pe mm. and yahan pe bhi unka office hai yahan ke bhi operations pe they are paying 9% 9% So they but the be, income that they generate here, yes, उसका जो difference है six percent they have to pay it there. Absolutely, this is the simplest uh, interpretation. क्या कह रहे हो आप? Exactly, if U A if U A implemented later than U S. Ah. So is this a good thing for the <laughs> company? I mean, see, sir, it is all see, again the starting point that they wanted to ensure there and there is no harmful practices, mm. right? So everyone is paying the fair. amount of tax and every tax every government is getting their fair share of revenue okay, mm. okay. so of course there are debates whether it's right why it's 15 Correct. if ue government is giving some relief then why still i have to pay in other countries Correct. of course these are the very valid points and uh, debatable points mm. but when we talk about tax sometimes we say that okay what is there in the law Correct. It becomes viable for us. Correct. <laughs> yeah. But for companies who are based here, uh, for example, if they are, uh, you know, exporting and importing, or unka bhi kafi global business hai, yeah. unpe kya impact hoga? Nothing, because they are based here. Unka headquarters yehi pe hai. And that's what we've been seeing. There's a company in France, jinka na mm. a base yaha pe hoga hai, headquarters yaha pe hoga. So if the headquarters is there, then till that time, UAE is not implementing this OECD. They have to pay there. No, so they then we are so the parent company headquarters is here. Hmm. So the differential tax which we were discussing, fifteen minus nine, uh-huh. have to be pay in the headquarter country. Nice. So for the UAE headquarters, they'll only pay this fifteen percent for those countries. Related to their operations in those countries. Right. So, just like a very big hospitality hotel chain, mm. yes, which has its base in France, has done it here. So, in that example, they have to pay tax in France. Even though their global business is happening, they will pay in their respective countries. Exactly. 
लेकिन यहां से जो जनरेटेड इनकम है ऑफ द होटल्स बेस्ड हियर तो वो उसमें सिर्फ नाइन परसेंट वो भरेंगे आगे तब तक जब तक यूएई इंप्लीमेंट नहीं करते यूएई इन द लो विच देस देर इज नो सच रेफरेंस इन द लो टू बी वेरी वेरी क्लियर बट इन द एफिक्यूज वेन दूड द एफिक्यूज दे स्पेसिफिकली मैंशन they will be oecd pillar to rules right right so those country those companies which are falling under those regulation which is which i mentioned 750 million turnover companies right, right. right. they'll be subject to those rules mm. so, i think we should quickly <laughs> slip into nice. um you know the next ad break and when we get back we will talk about the effective rate and what does it really mean and aapke paas koi sawal 0586861003 number to get in touch with us talk 100.3 Absolutely. Before we could go on a break, uh, we had a question up for Manish where uh, corporate tax was concerned. What's the question? Is it mandatory to register for corporate tax though our company does not have an income over three hundred and seventy-five thousand dirhams for the past four to five years? ये असलम ने ना आई थिंक पूरे स्मॉल बिजनेसेस के तरफ से क्वेश्चन पूछा है सुपर क्वेश्चन है नो इट्स इट्स अ वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन आई थिंक आई एम रिसीविंग दिस क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम मल्टीपल सेक्टर्स सो आई आई विल फर्स्ट मेंशन वेयर दिस 375 इज कमिंग फ्रॉम व्हिच व्हिच असलम हैज मेंशन ओके सो थैंक्स असलम इट विल हेल्प अदर ऑडियंस एज़ वेल दैट इन द लॉ इटसेल्फ ऑल्दो इट्स अ 9% टैक्स रेट Okay. But they have mentioned that okay, if your income is up till three seventy five k annually, so you will be paying zero percent tax. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's the tax payout. But now, no, so profit pay hai, right? Ha, profit pay ha, on the profit. That's what I'm saying. The three seventy five is the profit threshold profit. which is there in the uh, mm-hmm. legislation. Now uh, the question comes: If I'm having less than three seventy five, which Aslam mentioned, why I have to register? Correct. I have simple answer to that. It's us who are saying that I have a three seventy five less than income. Uh, How does income. the government know? How does government will know? How does government will trust us? See, tax is something we always say uh, that the documentation, the evidence, which which are the core thing. It's mm-hmm. not a relationship where we talk about trust. Right. <laughs> so uh, registration, unfortunately, would be mandatory, mm-hmm. not only for those businesses having an income less than three seventy five, but also for those. small business who have been given relief mm-hmm. where the uh, below 3 million revenue are not subject to tax Achha. or are subject to 0% tax they will also have to register but again we should not take it as a burden uh, i would say uh, we are talking about a country uae which mm-hmm. has always always tried to assist the businesses and giving less and less compliance burdens so mm-hmm. in the law itself they have given very simplified compliance obligations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it won't be i would say much of a burden mm-hmm. uh, to, i mean it's burden itself is should not be a right word uh, when we talk about a country like uae Correct. so registration to answer registration yes would be mandatory mm-hmm. and anyways as you know the small uh, and Uh, medium, medium enterprises, enterprises yeah. for them whether it's books of accounts or even small compliances even tally provide very user friendly customized solutions correct right. yes so tallysolutions.com pe aap log on karenge to you will find sab aise easy to use tools which are very compliant with the authorities as well you know a lot of these small uh, businesses as well it, it's i don't think they have a problem with um, identifying themselves with the legislation or anything of that you know sort like they don't mind registering i think the problem comes when you have to shell out that kind of money when you have to even the thought of it gets a little over the over and above the ask and i think that's the problem is mm. is that something that you are also noticing or what are the small, problems small that you are noticing in small liye, businesses yeah. to to maintain the book of accounts and yeah. to also you know uh, register and in terms of सोचना so भी कि आई हैव टू पे इवेंचुअली इफ आई गेट दिस काइंड ऑफ अ प्रॉफिट तो यू यू आर नॉट सीइंग दैट इश्यूज यू आर सीइंग इट आई वांट से इशू इज नॉट देयर ऑफ कोर्स व्हेनेवर देयर इज अ चेंज द एडॉप्टेबिलिटी इट टेक्स टाइम सो यस थिंकिंग अबाउट दैट ओके व्हाट आई हैव टू डू व्हिच आई हैव हैव नॉट आई हैवंट बीन डूइंग फॉर इयर्स राइट सो इट इट इज अ लिटिल पेन right but if we see the overall vision overall picture mm. right so i'm sure businesses would appreciate every big business was once small business correct mm. right so they always start mm. so initially yes uh, they might see that okay why i am in burden with this mm. but gradually they'll appreciate the whole purpose behind it mm-hmm. see ultimately is the transparency 
reporting the correct numbers mm. Mm. if you are doing that and you having a less than 3 million income revenue or 375k of uh, income mm. uh, less than that mm-hmm. so of course there will not be any tax mm. and compliance as i mentioned it's going to be very simple okay. it's already explained in the law mm. uh, it's not going to be a monthly pain it's going to be a annual one time compliance mm. uh, and registration anyways is a once in a lifetime right. you mm. take that and also fir baad mein no mahine baad aapko pay karna hai jab bhi aapka calendar year exactly and anyways when we talk about small and business small uh, enterprises they will not be paying tax they'll just comply that okay they'll report hmm. this is what they have earned during the year this is what they have sold during the year right so uh, for the next 3 years at least there for is exactly next some till really. 31st uske aage ka pata nahi aage let's see i'm sure <laughs> i would say why to think about getting a exemption of a lower income hmm. let's let's hope that they'll start earning more hmm. <laughs> why not yeah. see again we you pay taxes on the income hmm. right so i think maybe out of the context i always say we should actually think about paying more tax because that will only come when you have more income hmm. absolutely <laughs> we got to hold on to this thought right. a little uh, longer we will come back after this talk 100.3 9:34 on the clock. Good morning. This is um, Vivek Sanal and Mural D. Sun. We bring t- together. We bring to you daybreak. We're talking to Manish Arora about BEPS pillar two implication on the UAE corporate tax, and we recently got a question on TRC. Hmm. How tax residence certificate. Yes, uh, and and we were having a chat about this whilst we were on a break. Could you talk to us and tell us how this really helps us save that kind of extra money that we pay off? the whole trc <laughs> so uh, well the uh, it the trc i'll explain it's a tax residency certificate mm. as the name suggests it's a document which says that you are a tax resident of a country okay so all the provisions all the benefits all the obligations applied to the tax residents of that country applies to you mm. right so uh, i sh- we shouldn't see it as a venue or a way option to save the tax okay. it's not like that okay. mm. but yes there are multiple uh, double taxation scenarios mm-hmm. which gets avoided mm. okay so i think that's where the question was coming from our uh, viewer mm. that okay uh, when you are earning income from other countries mm. right and they might be applying tax on that hmm. and you'll have to pay tax here as well hmm. how do you do that how you settle that simple example lete hai ki mera property hai india mein aur main yahan pe de raha hu rental income mujhe mil raha hai hmm. so mujhe tax wahan pe bharna hi hai yes but yahan pe bhi property hai aur yahan pe jo rental income mujhe mil raha hai iske liye yahan pe ue mein koi law nahi hai jiske liye mujhe tax bharna hai but agar aa gaya hai matlab india mein mujhe bharna tha Mm-hmm. agar if i'm earning income rental income here mm-hmm. in that case if i'm a tax resident here so uh, so presuming that we have tax in both the countries you also have brought it now anyways it's oh, going okay. to come okay. presuming so what will happen that okay you are paying tax in uae hmm. on the global income right okay. so global income but same time you uh, are paying tax in, in india, india also well. so what happen that this TRC, which actually coming from tax treaty, we have a tax treaty. Different tax treaties we have in multiple with multiple mm. countries. Okay. So India and UAE also have. Okay. So which says that okay, in case you are paying a tax on an income in both the countries, mm. Mm. you get the offset, which mm. is deduction mm. in in when you are filing the return. So okay. that there is no double taxation for that. Oh, okay. Mm. So भरना है उसके बाद रिफंड मिलेगा एंड आई टेल यू प्रेजेंटली बिफोर दिस यू आई केम इन यू आई टैक्स केम इन टू द पिक्चर दिस टी आर सी वॉज ए वेरी वेरी यूजफुल फॉर यू आई कंपनीज वाई बिकॉज अदर कंट्रीज वेन दे वर इम्पोजिंग द टैक्स विच वॉज नॉट अदरवाइज टैक्सीबल एज पर द ट्रीटीज विच वॉज साइन बाई यू आई देन हाउ वुड यू स्टॉप द अदर कंट्री और अदर कंपनी टू नॉट टू अप्लाई देन यू यूज टू शो दैट ओके I have a TRC. I have a TRC. I am a tax resident of UAE, right. and as per the treaty, you have no right to tax. Hmm. It is the right with UAE. Correct. So you don't charge. You give me full income. I'll pay in UAE. Yes, that's a different thing. Tax was not there, but the right was with UAE. But UAE was not applying it. Correct. Hmm. Amazing. But now let's quickly get back to <laughs> BEPS. Uh, BEPS pillar two implication and uh, what is effective rate when you're talking, you know, in relate relation to the subject. good that you asked because we all the time we were talking about effective tax rate of 15% mm. so one is the tax rate which any country have like 9% going to come in uae you already have 25% in multiple countries so 20% in saudi right. that's the legislative tax rate okay right 
then you have a effective tax rate which is effectively you are paying okay now i'll tell you the with example to understand mm. suppose you have a income of 1 million of ad mm. Mm. on that 5 half a million you are earning from a say free zone okay mm. which is a qualifying income or, or i would say in simple terms which is not subject to tax okay mm. so what you would do you will pay tax of 9% on half a million mm. the balance half million mm. so you are paying instead of 90000 you'll be paying 45000 right. Mm. right so on a income of 1 million you'll be paying 45000 of tax correct mm. so effective tax for you will become 4.5 and not 9 ah waise oh. agar so aap dekho so in a very very nice. layman is the tax you are paying divided by the income you have earned mm. so it become f- so what the uh, the the oecd or the beps pillar 2 specified that it's not the tax rate they are talking about okay they are talking about the effective tax rate correct ko jo apply mm. hota hai mm. aapke Exactly on your, on your books and your books, how much books. you are paying. Yeah. So that's the tax. Of course, the calculation would be different, and they have given a. I mean, it's bit of a complicated as compared to the UA corporate tax calculation, mm. <laughs> and that's where most of the MNCs are right now working on that. Uh, but yes, uh, they ultimately have to calculate the effective tax rate in each jurisdiction. Hmm. and wherever they are not paying and then they'll be covered by that pillar to iar or other rules nice. <laughs> if they have to pay in other country yeah, <laughs> aur ye sare implications jo hai wo aaste aaste hi pata chalegi once i think june ke baad and probably next year ke baad hi we'll get to know more about it Aap, aapke paas koi sawal hai 0586861003 this hour is brought to you by tally solutions log on kijiye tallysolutions.com pe talk 100.3 Welcome to Daybreak with Vivek Sanal and myself Miro Disa and currently we are in conversation with Manish Arora and we are talking to him about uh BEPS pillar 2 implication on the UE corporate tax before we could go on a break uh, Manish we were speaking about uh, the 9% rule right yeah. the 9% could you could you elaborate a little bit more about this and how MNCs are going to benefit now so uh, for the short term when the countries <laughs> uh, including uae and the parent company are not implementing have not implemented so far in case so of course they'll be getting the benefit okay so i think we can cover it in a, in a scenarios a mm. scenario one the uae have not implemented which we know okay. and even the parent company that quarter company con- c- country of that company has also have not introduced the pillar 2 regulations okay. in place okay. in that case they'll continue to get benefit of this 9% okay. and even all the exemption which is there in the country Okay. whether it's free zone and any other exemption uh-huh. now second scenario where uae have not introduced uh-huh. but the parent company have introduced okay uh, in that case what would happen that okay uae will not be paying tax mm. they'll pay maximum 9% which is there in the law mm-hmm. but the differential i was mentioning that they, they have will have to, to pay, pay in the parent company mm. now coming to the third scenario okay. which going to be the future sooner or later that both the countries including uae and the parent company have introduced it right. so okay. there you will be paying 15% in both the jurisdiction minimum which is the effective tax rate because that will be the rule mm-hmm. which going to come right so i think uh, you know ye jo regulations ke baad now there is no ambiguity left in terms of ki 15% jo you know apply karna hai it will be matlab ab to matlab koi chance bacha nahi hai for companies to find places where they can uh do more tax planning <laughs> we used to talk about corporate tax few years back whether it will come or not mm. right so then uh, <laughs> last year when it the the in announcement came that discussion got over correct we that now it is here. income tax exactly <laughs> we are income tax same happened with this beps actions and the pillar 2 okay whether it will be applied by the countries whether it will be introduced by the uh, countries okay so because this oecd always give recommendations okay. whether the individual countries will implement or not right. that was the second discussion which used to happen okay. but yeah. i tell you now that discussion also is over hmm. because everybody have joined hands right. gradually sooner or later again it's all about when hmm. it's not about whether they going to come or not correct hmm. so yes it's short term uh, whatever the taxes less taxes is there uh, tax rate in different countries we can we can enjoy that correct. but but yeah effectively uh, it will come right. uh, the 15% which is the pillar 2 mm-hmm. and it, i would say uh, recently qatar announced mm-hmm. that they will be implementing it okay so so gradually uh, one or other country everywhere yeah. uh, part different parts of the world this will this news will prop up 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we shouldn't see it as a surprise because it's always a question of when. Yeah. I mean, I, if I have to link it to the VAT, uh, when mm-hmm. it was agreed by GCC countries way back in 2017, right. that will come up yeah. with the VAT. Mm-hmm. So we knew it's a question of when. It mm-hmm. started by Saudi and UAE, mm-hmm. then gradually Bahrain joined hands, then Oman joined hands. Now it's only Kuwait and Qatar which are pending, which mm-hmm. we know it's only a question of when. Correct. Yeah. It may take some time, more time, more years, mm. but gradually it's going to come. But And for countries to imply these, um, you know, corporate tax or VAT, do they have to tick certain boxes, um, you know, with the other officials that are governing all of this? Because for them to uh, imply it in their own country, they would have to go through a stringent sort of procedures, right? Now you're talking about the. Companies to apply the country, the country. The, no, the country. So I said that the OECD have given the recommendations, mm. oh, right? Okay. So the countries will include those kind of those recommendation in their legislation. Mm. Correct. So they'll come like the small business relief legislation came. Mm. That was a sep- specific. That's not applied to everyone. Globally, same needed. way yeah. the pillar two, when it's coming, it will be there uh, through a legislation. But it will be applied only to the bigger or large MNCs. Okay. Right. But uh, preparation, what should be done? Now, fifteen percent, there, here, nine percent. What will be the preparations be needed? See, right now, as I said, uh, preparation. We have to have the twofold preparation. Hmm. I tell you, the big companies how they are performing, including okay. mine. Okay. That there is a preparation which has to be done for UAE. Hmm. You have to welcome. Correct. It's, it's coming. Correct. Right. So whatever the requirements, registration, the data requirement, we have to prepare that hmm. till the time the other legislation is not coming. Hmm. But at the same time, we know that OCD also uh, pillar two implication going to come, hmm. and hmm. that also I'm talking about now those companies for whom the pillar two applies. Hmm. Right. So the OCD have already explained. There are multiple guidance, hmm. practical examples, the detailed uh, such recommendations. Are there so which is there in the public? Mm. Uh, I would say public place. So you can you can access to that and then accordingly you prepare for that. Right. So we already doing it. Uh, multiple companies. It's a two way uh, two fold. I would say preparation going on. One for the implementation of OECD because that's not restricted to any country. Okay. Mm. That's globally you have to manage that. Okay. Especially for the bigger groups, right? So now talking about UAE, yeah, it's specific. So wherever you have operations in UAE, you have to prepare for that as well. Right. Which is a Amazing. I think we're going to hold on to this conversation for one last time. But when we come back after this, talk one hundred point three. Three nine fifty three on the clock. Still in conversation with Manish Arora. We're talking to him about BEPS implication and what has this got to do in the near future to come. Uh, you know, could we just sum up the whole thing? Or is there any any point that we haven't touched on already that you'd like to talk about? So, uh, if I have to summarize, see, effectively, it is a global regulation mm. for which UAE already ha- joined hands mm. to agree. Whatever is finalized, mm. so UAE will implement it sooner or later. Right, okay. right, and uh, all the MNCs which are covered by this pillar two threshold, which mm. presently we know it's seven fifty k euro mm-hmm. of revenue, will have to comply with that. So okay. uh, that's the uh, quick summarization. Mm. Uh, which, so uh, it's not that uh, something which where we'll have an option. Mm. Once UAE is bringing up mm-hmm. the required legislation, we'll have to apply. On a on a broader uh, note, ये जानना चाहेंगे कितने companies होंगे ऐसे who have a revenue of seven hundred fifty million. Right, see, there may be. Is is as I mentioned the globally when they came up with the data that they are losing around two hundred or billion annually right, in the tax, right? right. So so the numbers is uh, un- huge. undoubtedly huge. Okay. Of course, it's tough to mention any specific number, but it is huge. Hmm. It is huge. Absolutely. And anything um, you know for um, any tips or any advice for people who are about to file themselves for the corporate tax, how can they better prepare themselves? So uh before answering that question question I would uh, go to the issues which are being faced mm-hmm. okay right here we are talking about the numbers the datas of multiple jurisdictions mm-hmm. okay so for a group to have the uh, same automation right to to bring the, the data on the same lines to compute this Beps pillar two actions. Okay. Right. So that's where the uh, struggle is coming, Achha. and majorly the two, uh, all the groups are right now working on that. Mm. 
I know uh, Tally also provides some customized solution to have a customized reports to yeah, have the data, right? But 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 that's where I think it depends on the industry you're working, depends on the complexity you have to whatever extent. Because when we talk about multiple countries, multiple data, and sometimes multiple ERPs, mm -hmm. so it becomes a bit complicated. Right. Uh, there are some unavoidable complications you always have in the company. Mm -hmm. So you you uh, should work on. I mean, that's where I would suggest that okay, instead of waiting. To for the legislation or the final uh, blueprint, we mm -hmm. should work now. We should start now mm -hmm. to see what to what extent we can have the data ready okay. and automated. And that's something the future. Superb. How can people get in touch with you, Manish, uh, on LinkedIn? Kya aap uh, active ho kafi or? Uh, ऐसे एडवाइसेस आप देते हो मदद करते हो आई वुड बी हैप्पी इफ इफ आई कैन असिस्ट एनी वन यस आई एम अवेलेबल ऑन लिंक इन दैट्स माई फुल नेम मनीष अरोड़ा आई एल बी देयर इफ रिक्वायर्ड ऑन माई ई मेल आई डी सी ए मनीष एट सेवन एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम क्या बात है इंडस्ट्री एज इफ नाउ आपके दोस्त आस्क पंकज भी आपको हाई बोल रहे हैं बोल रहे हैं गुड मॉर्निंग एंड सच अजर टू लिसन टू मनीष ऑन द रेडियो टूडे थैंक्स टू पंकज So tallysolutions.com every Mondays and Fridays up sunega Absolutely and with this it's also a wrap on our show Manish thank you so much bahut acha laga A pleasure to be here honestly I had a good time uh, it was so smooth uh, and I think I hope uh, the listeners also liked it Fingers Thanks crossed. to talk one. So no, I always like when the topics like tax and <laughs> compliances are, are given some weightage. Yeah. So thanks to Tally and thanks to Talk One and Point Three uh, to have a dedicated program. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.